So this video is called Assume God Exists. Now anyone who's seen my videos knows that I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God. But <clears throat> for this video we're going to try and assume that God exists and we are going to try and uh, explain how and why God created uh, uh, the universe and uh, the seeds of life. Well I shouldn't say um, the universe. Let's say uh, uh, how and why God uh, provided the energy for the Big Bang and uh, how and why uh, God created the the first spark of life on planet Earth uh, which would explain abiogenesis okay but we're gonna take into account all the scientific theories we're not going to go through the Christian route and say that Earth is 6,000 years old and all this other nonsense which isn't true we're gonna take into account every scientific principle and uh, that means we're gonna uh, we're gonna say evolution occurred, which it did, and we're gonna say the Big Bang occurred, which it did. Okay, now already right off the bat, we can't uh, explain how uh, how God did any of these things. He's a supernatural being, so I can't uh, I can't even speculate on how he was able to do these things. So we'll throw that out right right away. Okay, now the question that we can analyze is why. Now, we're assuming God exists. Now, let's start with uh, the Big Bang. Why would he initiate the Big Bang? And then we'll go into uh, abiogenesis, which would be, uh, why would he seed Earth with the seeds of life? Okay, now a little background on um, the reason for why beings create anything. Now, the only way we can understand why a a being would create anything is to compare a being to us and why we create things. Um, right away we can eliminate uh, ideas, ridiculous ideas of uh, God loving or hating us. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for us to create something because we hate it. It doesn't make any sense for us to create anything because we love it. Okay, We create things out of a desire, out of a selfish desire it is inherently because we lack something about ourselves so therefore we need to create something to fulfill that we create lots of things computers airplanes uh, automobiles books uh, television shows we create all of these things because we lack them ourselves we need these things to fulfill something about ourselves that we lack so therefore that is a key concept in understanding why God would create anything because he lacks something about himself that he needed. He lacks something about himself. So he had to create something to provide something that he could, could not provide for himself otherwise. So that says something very interesting about God. That he is not omnipotent. He is not a perfect being. He is imperfect. Because he had to create something. Otherwise there would be no point in creating it. If you have everything, there's no point in creating anything. Because you already have it all. He had to create this universe because it provides something for himself that he doesn't have. So it serves some purpose for him. Now, from our, our even our own planet is very insignificant and small. It has it has no significant bearing on the universe. So our un our planet is not very significant in his plans. Let's say the universe as a whole is significant in his plans. Whatever those plans are, the universe is what provides that not our planet specifically. Now let's talk about abiogenesis, origins of life. Well, right away we can say that he does not control evolution. We are only assuming that he seeded the planet with the, the seeds of life. Okay, We know for a fact that he did not create humans. Humans evolved. The, it, uh, the humans arising from this planet was incidental. It had nothing to do with God. God did not create humans. At most, God could create the seeds of life and then life forms were able to evolve out of that but he did not create us we know that so uh, therefore he cannot love us and he cannot hate us and also from the point of view of a god we would be so insignificant so small and pathetic it would be like us caring about ants or us caring about uh, bacteria we don't hate or love these things okay it's not it's not about that so for for us to fit into his plans or whatever for whatever fulfillment he needs we're not factored into that significantly uh, if we were to uh, 
talk about why we seed anything. Uh, we have farmers that seed uh, uh, crops, fields to grow crops, grow plants, and other, other things. Uh, we raise cattle. We grow these things. Why? Why do we grow these things? It has nothing to do with us uh, uh, creating these things to benefit the life form itself, right? We don't grow crops to benefit crops. We don't uh, raise cattle for the benefit of cattle. We raise these things for ourselves. It is inherently selfish. That's the point. So if, if we assume that God seeded earth with the seeds of life, it would be for his own reasons. It would have nothing to do with benefiting us. That would be pointless. He doesn't care any more than we care about cattle or crops. We don't care about them. We care about us. So it will inherently be selfish. So that's basically it. Uh, we can conclude the reason why he did any of these things. If we assume that he uh, created the energy for the Big Bang or he seeded Earth, and I'm assuming he would seed other planets with life, it would be for his own selfish reasons. Uh, so what, what are some of those selfish reasons? I guess the only other thing, I mean, if he's so powerful, maybe it's just out of boredom. You know, maybe he created these things to entertain himself. Isn't that entirely possible? Uh, maybe there's something about the universe and its energy that he needs to sustain himself or other beings like him. There could be something like that. Um, it's really something hard to fathom, you know, uh, but uh, I think we can determine that if, if he actually does exist, it would, it would be for his own reasons, not for us. Um, so, why do Christians uh, reject the scientific theories and facts, uh, but accept God? You know, if you think about it and you accept all the scientific theories and facts, the idea of God is very weak because it's very emotionally unsatisfying. It's no longer about love. It's no longer about him caring about us because none of those concepts make any sense. We are so small and insignificant that it wouldn't make any sense. And he didn't create us. We just evolved, incidentally. So Christians like to reject uh, evolution and the Big Bang and all these other scientific concepts because, uh, because the idea of God makes, is very bad to them after that. It, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's very emotionally unsatisfying. But they're rejecting the wrong thing. You can't reject facts or scientific uh, principles because we know these things are true. We know that the Big Bang took place. We know evolution takes place. You can't reject that. So if you're going to reject anything, you have to reject God because there's nothing supporting him. Just because you don't like his motives after, it, after we rationalize.